Hi, mamas and friends. It's Sarah from Late Night Coffee Moms, and we're here for our Thursday meetup. If you're coming from a, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello. Um, you're a week behind, so anything I have to say about, I'm going to be introducing you to a, a curriculum thing that's happening. That will be in the descriptions. Mama's watching now. That's over there. Uh, I'm pointing the wrong direction. I don't know which direction. It's over there. <laughs> I can't get my left and right. Correct. <laughs> so today, hmm, it's, <sighs> don't have books for you today. So today we're going to talk about an important subject that all homeschoolers, all mamas of every kind, and especially homeschool mamas, and uh, prospective homeschool mamas have an issue with. And that is finding time or ways to find time to just be you. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a second. I'm assuming you guys have your copy. Let's go ahead and have a deep sip. together. And I'm going to give you guys seven ways that I have personally used to take a break from just being a mama or being a mama teacher. I want to be Sarah sometimes. And occasionally, <laughs> children, no matter how much you love them and how endearing they are and how much you enjoy their company, they can get a little bit overwhelming and a little bit in your face. And especially if you're um, sacrificing to be a stay-at-home mom or you're sacrificing anything to be a, a homeschool mama or you have any special needs kind of situation at all in your house, it amplifies that. It ampl amplifies that because either your, ch your child is always around you or they're always in constant need of you, right? Yeah, I'm touching my hair. I don't know why I do that all the time. So how do we take breaks when we don't have time? When we don't have a way to take a break and they're always around, always in your face and you're starting to feel like you're losing who you were. Now, before we get into this anymore, okay, I believe homeschooling is a God calling that he calls you to do it for whatever reason. Sometimes it's a, uh, it maybe it sometimes starts out as fear, like what's happening in the school systems or what's happening with, I don't know, any any kind of thing that's happening. Sometimes it can start as fear, and then he grows it into something better. Sometimes it can start as principles, like I believe this, this, and this, and the schools aren't teaching that. It could start that way. Some people are just born knowing they're always going to homeschool. If it's with ever, it's if it's ever in their ability to do it, they're going to do it. I was not one of those people. I don't know if I've had this conversation with you guys before. Um, and I've been finding many more mamas who are like me who never even, it wasn't even that they didn't consider homeschooling. They never wanted to. That was me. And there's a whole bunch of us out there now. But again, if God calls you to do something, you do it anyway. Whether you want to or not, you go for it. And you just trust he's going to make it all work out. Um, but in the middle of it all, so I'm not talking about that sacrifice. I'm not talking about the sacrifice of your time. I'm talking about the times when you feel like the needs of everyone around you has made you forget who you are. Now, God does change us through homeschooling. He's added, he's added patience to me. I don't think I ever had it to begin with. And so the part of <laughs> the part of me that is patient now, he has grown from that um, experience of homeschooling. He has helped me learn how to study because I never studied in high school. I made good grades, but I just didn't study. Um, he's taught me compassion. There's so many things he's grown me in using homeschooling as the tool to do that. But there are seasons when it feels as if the creation of Sarah is just being bled dry. Like there's nothing left of who I was created to be. Even 
I'm not even saying past self or sinful self or the flesh or whatever. Okay, that needs to go. But I'm talking about who God created me, me to be is disappearing, it feels like, because I feel so, um, I can't even think of the right word, kind of trapped, uh, like energy is just being just bled out of me. So how does I, how does a homeschool mom take a break when she doesn't get one? Okay, so I've got seven ways to do that. And there, these are in no real order because you'll see some of them I really, really like. And some of them are a little bit harder. But this is the ways I found. <laughs> and I'm not saying they're all healthy. But they can be if you use them wisely. So number one should come as no surprise to any of you. I like dark coffee and dark chocolate. If I can have those two things together, maybe once a week, and just sit down somewhere and enjoy it, I know that is, uh, in itself, it's an impossible feat, you know, because if you're going to drink your hot coffee and eat your dark chocolate in the bathroom, it kind of loses its fun. All those are brown substances in the bathroom do, does not equate escape or vacation. But sometimes your closet can, and it, as your kids get older, they're not going to constantly be picking at you to get what you have because they're going to learn they don't like some of the stuff you've got. But if I can have just even three minutes to enjoy fresh, hot coffee and a little tiny sliver of dark chocolate, that feels as if I've had a break. <laughs> I don't know, what do, you, what do you guys use for those kind of things? Now, be careful with food because food can take you in a whole different direction, but I know that dark chocolate helps stabilize it, stabilize my anxiety levels, and coffee just is warm and comforting. So without just running out and grabbing a pie and eating it all myself, that's the healthiest alternative I have in that particular room. So dark chocolate and good fresh coffee. The second one is in regard, it's kind of like an after effect of the dark chocolate and the coffee is going to the gym. Now, when I had littles, this was not possible for me, uh, partially from fear because, you know, I'm homeschooling so that my kids aren't going and being put in somebody else's care. So I didn't really want to go and trust the gym people to watch my kids. And then the other part was just money where, you know, you're struggling on one income and now you have more people in your family than just you and your husband. Uh, it can make things kind of tight. So the gym was not a possibility, possibility for me until this last year when an anonymous benefactor helped me have a year at the gym and I have loved it now. I don't always like going because the first first thing I want to do when I get up in the morning is not leave. It's get my coffee, snuggle up on the couch, start reading, start doing work on my blog, start working on my books, whatever that is. It's not always get up and go be active somewhere. But I have found two workout classes that I really, really enjoy and that even though I still don't like going to the gym, I have a blast when I'm there. And that is, I like water aerobics. <laughs> um, I like it because it doesn't hurt my joints and I can push myself a lot harder than I think I could push myself on land. So um, yeah, I'm not a great land mammal, but I like it. It's fun. It's makes me feel like a kid and it's, it moves quickly and then I can go home and I have a little bit more energy. At the beginning, I was zapped of energy, but my energy has been building up since I've been going. So I like water aerobics. And the next class is my absolute favorite. It's called Pound. I don't know how many of you guys have done this. And I don't have my sticks. I actually bought my own sticks to do it at home, which is not as much fun as going to a class. But Pound is you have drumsticks and they play um, music and you keep rhythm with your drumsticks. But during a pound class, 
there is like, I think it's over or right at 500 squats or lunges are happening during a pound. But if you are like a kind of, I don't know how we would say this, music kind of groupy person like I am, it's amazing to just be hitting your drumsticks as hard as you can. Nobody is looking at you. You're in a room full of people who are doing the same thing. I can't tell you how exciting it is when you're doing like a a chorus riff or, riff or something and everyone is hitting it at the same time and it's just echoing through the room. It's so much fun and the class just goes so fast and you feel like, uh, like it's karaoke for drummers. It's just, it's great. I really, really like Pound. Now again, the gym was not accessible to me when I was, when my kids were younger. And this time it was only accessible to me because I had a benefactor. But if the gym is something you can do, and if you don't like, if you're not like self-motivated on machines or any kind of things like that, I totally am not. I need to know there's a beginning and an end. And even though I'm an introvert, so I don't like socialize well, <laughs> I like doing it with other people in the room. I like knowing I'm not the only one doing the exercise. So I highly recommend the gym. It's a great escape. It's way healthier for you than dark chocolate and good coffee, although it can be overdone too. So from the gym, so we've got dark chocolate and good coffee, the gym, and three is some kind of hobby, or now people call it like a side hustle. Something you can do that's just for you, that uses your gifts for either making money or just for your enjoyment or even as an act of service to somebody else. Um, let me think. I can't think of anything from when my kids were really little that I used to do with them because doing things when your kids are little is hard. It's it's hard and I'm not going to lie to you guys and tell you that doing a hobby or a side hustle is going to be absolutely possible for every mother out there no because when your kids are little especially if there is any kind of special needs in, at all in the experience it's hard to go anywhere do anything or think <laughs> enough to enjoy these kind of things but this is where I want to look you in the eye. Get close to your screen. Look into my eyes. It does not last forever. This season where they feel incredibly needy on you and you feel like you're losing your mind if you can't get out of the house. Okay. It does not last forever and you miss it when it's gone. Okay. You do not miss the energy drain, but you miss the cute little kid who'll crawl up in your lap and be with you. That is not there forever. Please, mama, if you're going through this phase and you cannot break apart to do a hobby or a side hustle, I got you. Enjoy the snuggles. They do not last long. Enjoy them. You're not going to get them back. Okay? Not with those kids. Maybe with your grandkids, but not with those. So hang on tight to, do, to those. When you're drained and you don't want to snuggle anymore or cuddle anymore, just do it anyway. Soak it up and remind yourself this is a season. And one day I'm going to miss this. Now, for the mamas who can break away a little bit, for whatever reason, you've got a good sitter, you've got older kids, you've got older kids that watch your little kids, who knows? A hobby or a side hustle is a great way to have a time out for you. Uh, obviously, one of my side hustles is this, this Facebook Live things. It's also my blog and my books. So I love to write. Writing is an escape for me unless I'm feeling pressured to um, produce. Okay, and then it becomes hard. Or editing, editing. I don't count as writing because it's not the creative part for me. I love to write, and writing helps me tremendously because these are my people. I control what happens to them, and I can tell them no whenever I want to. So it helps me a lot, but it also helps because I know that with my writing and my blog and things like that, I will be pulling in a little tiny bit of income to help my family. And that itself 
makes me feel better about me. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm contributing more, even though I'm already doing a lot. You're already doing a lot, mom. I feel better about me and what I'm up to if I'm contributing a little tiny bit, it does not have to be major, to our home finances, especially if it's doing something I love, like a hobby or a side hustle. So if you have a hobby or a side hustle, mama, put it in the comments. This is your time, because I'm not always gonna give you time to do this. This is your time to self-promote, right? That way, right in the comments, do it. Put it down, you have my permission, your website, whatever you want to do, put it down there. So you guys know my website is latenightcoffeemoms.com and I've got, currently have two paperbacks out and the third one should be out in the next month or so. But that's my hobby and my side hustle and that helps me take a break as a mom, especially as a homeschool mom. Now be careful with this too because you can very quickly become a workaholic on your side hustle or your hobby. I have known mothers who have shove their children into rooms for hours so they can just scrapbook. Now, once in a while, that's cool. But every day, you might have a problem and you might need to refocus on what's important and adjust your priorities. Okay, so dark chocolate, good coffee, the gym, and a hobby or a side hustle. Now, number four, quiet time. This is amazing for homeschoolers. We call the quiet time, AKA nap time. And now you start this early. Don't be in a hurry if you have little ones to make them stop their nap time, especially if you're going to be homeschooling. You're going to want that space. Even if that means you're taking a nap during that time, it helps. If that means you're gonna be doing the dishes while listening to a podcast that uplifts you during that quiet time, great. So it started out as nap for us. My kids have been out of the naps season for years now, but we still had quiet time. And quiet time means you go to your own room and you do something quiet. You may listen to music or an audiobook as long as it doesn't infringe on anybody else's quiet. And quiet time lasts an hour. It has a start time and an end time. And I was pretty cutthroat about this with my kids to where they would have to go, mama, is quiet time over yet before they came out of the room? If they asked too many times, I would add five minutes to quiet time because it's only an hour. They need to learn how to be alone, especially if you're homeschooling, they're with you all the time. So they need to know, learn how to be alone. They also need out of each other's spaces, right? Um, sometimes my littlest would need to be outside. And as long as I could see her outside in our backyard, I would let her go do that um, as her quiet time because she needs nature. Whereas my, uh, my oldest just wants to be with Legos and uh, now video games and things like that. But we had very strict rules about what you could do during quiet time. Please create a quiet time habit at your house. If you're not used to it already and you're homeschooling, start small. Start with five minutes, then 10, and move yourself up to where you're getting an hour. Even if all you're doing, mom, during that time is readjusting for the next part of the homeschool day or just recentering your brain to get to wife mode before husband comes home, do it. Quiet time, aka nap time. Let it grow with your kids. It is vital. Now my family just kind of does it habitually. So we finish our major homeschool work for the day. Then we do chore time. And mysteriously, my children disappear after, well, let's face it, right before chore time, they disappear and I have to call them back. But after chore time, they also just disappear. They go to their own places and they play or read or do something for like 30 minutes without me even telling them to. Sometimes the full hour. And that's because that was always a habit in our home. So please, mama, if you are homeschooling or intending to homeschool, do not force your children to give up nap time. Keep it and then let it evolve into quiet time. This is wonderful for you. This is a great break, okay? And please try the best you can, if you already have this down, 
try not to make quiet time about chores or finishing up curriculum. Take a break. Be you. That's a great time to do your side hustle or your hobby. It's a great time to smuggle your dark chocolate or your good coffee. Or if you can't go to the gym and you like to work out at home, it's a great time to do that too. Quiet time. Quiet time. Quiet time. I know you guys have heard me talk about together time. Now quiet time is separate. <laughs> Those are our two major times. Together time and quiet time. Okay. So the fifth thing, and I don't know if this is just me and how I would escape, or if any of you guys have done this, give me like little emojis if you guys have done this. Loud, solo car drives. <laughs> Long drives. I don't care if they're not, they don't have to be long. They could be to Stater Brothers, which is six minutes from my house. I can get in my car because my husband is home and he can watch the kids and I'm going to get in the car and I might just be running to pick up toilet paper, but I put on music, either praise music or music from high school and I turn up the speakers in a way I never would if my children were in the car and I would probably run out of the house and yell at them if they ever did that in their own car. And I sing louder than the speakers. And I let it go. I do not censor myself. Yes, I pay attention to the road. But I sing as loud as I can. And for those five, six minutes, I feel like me again. I feel like I remember you and I kind of liked you. And I get to enjoy being a girl, being me again. So I cannot speak highly enough of loud car drives. So number six kind of goes with loud car drives because if I'm not having a loud, loud car drive, this is what I'm doing. Talk out loud to God. This can happen in my car. <sighs> this can happen while I'm doing dishes. I will just talk out loud to him. He's there anyway. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows what I'm going to say. It usually happens during quiet time. If I can't go for a drive or something, talk out loud to God. Walk around your house. Talk out loud to him. He's right there with you. He's walking beside you. Talk to him like that friend you can't call yet because her school day isn't over yet. <laughs> or that friend who lives in a different time zone. So you have to wait until you think they're done with dinner until you can call and talk to her. Talk to God out loud. It teaches your kids so much that you know he's there, that you trust him, and that he cares about you enough to hear your silliness, just like you hear their silliness, right? Talk to God out loud. And the very last thing, okay, so we'll go all back through them again. Dark chocolate and good coffee. Go to the gym. Find a hobby or a side hustle. Quiet time. Quiet time. Loud car drives. Talk out loud to God. And number seven is going to be my biggest recommendation for any homeschool mama. Find a small group. A support homeschool support group. My little group around here where I live is a private, uh, private school satellite program. And they have small groups or they did have small groups that we would meet once a month off and on during the school year. And you could ask questions about curriculum. You could ask questions about scheduling. You could ask questions about high school, about middle school, about grades, testing, all that kind of stuff. You could ask and somebody there would have the answer or some experience with it. But more than that, you can tell them things that you probably wouldn't normally tell the mom who sits next to you at church who doesn't homeschool too. You could tell them your kid is driving you crazy and you don't know what to do. You could tell them about uh, the fights that happen over math or that if you have to listen to your student cry through this subject again, you're just going to go batty. You can talk to them. You can be honest with them. They will encourage you and uplift you and give you suggestions for your way. So in my area, my small group went on for like the first nine years of our homeschool experience. In fact, this is our first year without an official small group. And thus I made this little Facebook group <laughs> because I need to talk to people and I can only assume others need to talk to people too. And if you're not even verbalizing with me, you can leave comments. You can find other friends who are watching the same live. You can talk to each other. I do have a group, Late Night Coffee Moms group. 
I am not very active in it, but when you join up in it, you can ask each other questions like you do in a small group. And that's great. Facebook, as long as you're using it for encouraging and knowledge gathering, but wisely with discernment is great. So are these videos. They're wonderful. However, they're not as good as sitting with a flesh and blood person and talking to them. That's one reason I call this little channel Late Night Coffee Moms, my blog too, is some of the best conversations I've ever had with other mothers happened after a small group, once the hostess kicked us out, never kicked us out, but you know, we get in our cars and maybe we drive around an extra 30 minutes instead of going home right away and we have our coffee. Sometimes we have our dark, dark chocolate or a slice of pie, but we're drinking our late night coffee and talking about what our soul needs and what our hearts need and what our fears are and what our hopes are. And that's what Late Night Coffee Moms is. I'm hoping to be like your virtual small group. But really, if you are going to homeschool or if you're homeschooling already, find a small group. It's really important. Make sure they have the same values you have. If you're going to um, a secular like small group and you're a Christian, they can still be highly encouraging, but they're not going to understand some of the some of your reasonings or your curriculum choices and the other way around. So look for somebody who can support you, right? Look for a small group. All right, I'm going to wrap this up with a plug for an upcoming online summit. It starts, I believe it starts Monday. It is called the Homeschool Curriculum Summit 2.0. It is totally free. Curriculum providers come on and they'll have um, the little seminars and stuff. It's like going to a convention without having to go to a convention. It's in your home. You get to watch it. There's a link, again, oh my gosh, I can't point in the right direction. There's a link for it over here on the side of the page. And that's my affiliate link. If you don't want to use my affiliate link, just type in homeschoolcurriculumsummit.com uh, and go that way. But if you'd like to help a mama out, you can always click that link and head on over. And it's totally free. Now, there are extra things you can sign up for and purchase if you want to. Like, let's say you really want to be there for the summit, but your kid has testing that week or something. And so you know you're not going to watch it or the one speaker you really, 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 really wanted to see is happening while you're at co-op, you can sign up to, for something to let you keep all of the recordings and watch them whenever you can. Like getting the CDs at a convention, right, of the speakers. So that's there too. And if you're thinking about homeschooling or if you need a new curriculum change, go check that out. I know of, there's a ton of curriculum providers on there. I believe Masterbooks will be there. Um, I think there's going to be a speech by Andrew Pudua, who is um, IEW. There's so many people, honestly. There's Ken Ham. I mean, I can't even go. Check it out. It's totally free. What could you lose? All right. So take care of yourself, Mama. Also, write in the comments, what's your favorite way to take care of yourself or to just have some time to yourself? at home. Are you finding it hard? Were any of my suggestions helpful to you? Or should I be asking other mo moms for their suggestions? Hmm? It's taking me a long time to figure out what works and figure out the patterns that work. All right. This was a really long one. Sorry about that. Okay. I'll catch you later. Bye.